like to ask you this morning, if you will, to please turn in your Bibles to the book of Psalms. I would like to read from the 118th Psalm, Psalm 118 and verse 24. Psalm 118 and verse 24. The, uh, the Word of God says quite a number of times, and these are the main four words that are on my heart this morning. The Word of God tells us that we are to be of good cheer. Be of good cheer. That means we're to be happy, that we're to rejoice. The Word of God says that in a lot of different ways. The bottom line is that we're to be of good cheer. The Word of God says that we're to rejoice always. And the Apostle Paul said in the Philippian letter, he says, Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice. He says, finally my brethren, rejoice in the Lord. We have a lot of reasons to be rejoicing. We have many reasons to be of good cheer. The first and foremost reason I think that we have to be of good cheer is because Jesus has saved us from our sins. And we talk about that sometimes in a light and frivolous way, but that's the greatest blessing we have is that Jesus has saved us from our sins. We're going to be in heaven one day forever. We can't even comprehend being somewhere forever. But we're going to be in heaven forever because of what God has done for us. It doesn't matter what else happens in this world. We need to be rejoicing because we are going to be with God in the eternal heaven. But that's not the only joy that we have in the, is in the eternal heaven. We have many reasons to rejoice every day in our lives. Every single day in our lives, we ought to be of good cheer. We ought to be rejoicing every day. The Bible tells us the Lord daily, every day, loadeth us with benefits. I have many, many blessings today, and you have many blessings today. On that day in Job's life, when he lost all of his possessions and lost all ten of his children, even on that day, Job was able to be of good cheer. He was able to rejoice. He was able to say, the Lord gave and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. He was worshiping God and praising God even in that hour of sorrow and trouble. He still had reasons to be of good cheer, to be rejoicing that day. Psalm 118 and verse 24, the word of God says, this is the day which the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Every day of our lives we need to quote that verse of scripture. And we need to pray that God will help us in our hearts that we can truthfully, honestly say and understand this day, this Sunday, tomorrow we get up, this day. Every day this week you need to say, this is the day the Lord hath made. You know, God made this day. God makes every day. God's the one that spared your life to see another day. And every day God is with you and that's a reason for you to rejoice and be of good cheer. Is because God has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. That's another reason to rejoice every day. I can rejoice every day because I know that the gates of hell cannot prevail against the church. That makes me happy. I have no fear of the gates of hell prevailing against the church of Jesus Christ because Jesus gave us a promise there that that would never happen. We as the people of God have many, many reasons to be of good cheer. And the only time I think we stop being of good cheer and stop rejoicing is when the devil deceives us into looking at our troubles and our problems instead of looking at the blessings that we have every day. Do you think the devil has tried to get me discouraged some this week or depressed this week? Uh, there have been a half a dozen times I started bawling crying this week. 
I mean, at least a half a dozen. <laughs> I thought I was going to preach my mama's funeral. She said, will you preach my funeral? I said, yes, ma'am, I will. And I felt so strong and confident. And I'm telling you, last Sunday night, I decided I can't preach her funeral. But let me tell you something, brethren. I haven't been depressed or discouraged or despondent over three minutes in a row since she went home to be with the Lord. And every time somebody starts talking about how sad they know that I am and how we're going to miss her and all of these things, I immediately say, listen, in the past two weeks of her life, God performed a lot of miracles and God blessed her in miraculous ways all the days of her life. And I cannot be sad knowing and looking at all the ways God has blessed her life and God has blessed me because of her life I'm sorry I cannot be sad I sing because I'm happy did you know last Sunday God blessed us beyond measure my mom went home to be with the Lord at 8 o'clock Sunday morning you know where we were at 11 o'clock last Sunday morning Anybody have any idea where we were last Sunday morning? At 11 o'clock we were at church. The whole family, after we went over the, the grieving of her passing at 8, I said, let's go to the house of the Lord. And we all went to the house of the Lord. Marty was able to preach last Sunday morning. I was two hours, if, I'd, if she had died at 7 o'clock, I think I would have been back here. Let me tell you something, brethren. You and I are going to have troubles in our lives. Sometimes instead of births, we're going to have deaths in the church. We've had a lot of births, and I thank God for every one of them. But we need to understand as people are being born, people are dying. And in, even in those days that instead of births, we're having deaths, we still can rejoice that day, knowing that they go home to be with the Lord right then. And instead of wealth, sometime we're going to have poverty. I've been up on the mountaintop financially, and I've been down in the valley. I'm telling you, brethren, it doesn't matter whether you're on the mountaintop financially or you're down in the valley. I want you to know you're supposed to be of good cheer and rejoice no matter what's going on in your life. doesn't matter if you have, if you have good health. One day if you live long enough, you're going to have some physical problems. And no matter whether you're having good health or whether you're sick, you need to be of good cheer every day of your life. It doesn't matter what's going on in our lives, brethren. It doesn't matter whether we're in harmony or whether there's division. It doesn't matter what's going on. We as a people of God need to be of good cheer and say, This is the day which the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. I will be glad. I will rejoice. I will be glad because I decide that by the grace of God and with the help of God, I'm going to do what God says. I'm going to rejoice always. Every day, I'm going to be of good cheer. Every day, I'm going to rejoice and be glad in it every day. One of the things I think that helps us when we're having bad things happen is to start talking about good things. You know, Paul said this. He said, I think myself happy. When I start thinking about the things I'm supposed to think about. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 8 tells us the things we're to think about. And when I think about those things and when you think about those things, you will rejoice and be glad. You will be of good cheer if you're thinking about what God tells you to think about. The only time I'm sad, discouraged, despondent, and depressed is when I'm thinking about something the devil would have me think about. And so I pray, brethren, that every one of us, by the grace of God, that we would declare and say, I'm happy today. Well, what about your trouble? I don't, I'm not going to think about them. I'm not going to talk about them. I'm not interested in talking about the troubles. I want to tell you how blessed we are today. And we are blessed beyond measure. I want us to take just a few scriptures that talk about individuals that have big trouble, big problems. And I want you to know in every one of those situations, every time, it didn't matter what the situation was, didn't matter if it was sickness, didn't matter if it was persecution, didn't matter if it was being put in prison, it didn't matter if it meant being put to death. Every time the Word of God said to those individuals, be of good cheer, rejoice. 
be happy. Well, what about the problems? Doesn't matter. Be happy anyway. Rejoice anyway. Be of good cheer anyway. Turn your Bibles to begin with to Matthew chapter 9. Matthew chapter 9. Listen please to verses 1 and 2. Matthew chapter 9. And brethren, don't think that I'm telling you to sit down and just, just sit down and be lethargic and say, well, I don't have a job and so I'm just going to be happy anyway. Let me tell you something, brethren, if I don't have a job, I better be out looking for a job. And don't sit down and say, well, I have this problem or that problem. Don't you sit down, brethren, and get busy and do everything you can do and pray for God to guide you and direct you and help you and bless you. And God will bless your life. You may have to go through some hard times before you get to the other side. The Word of God tells us in the book of Psalms, weeping may endure for a night, but what? But joy cometh in the morning. It's coming. And so the promise from God is joy is coming in the Lord in the morning. So I can be happy in the night because I know joy is coming in the morning. I can be of good cheer today and you can be of good cheer today because this is the day the Lord has made. There's nothing that's going to happen this day or tomorrow or any day in your life. There's nothing that's going to happen in your life that God doesn't already know it's going to come to pass. And God has said, I'll be with you. And so I've got a reason to rejoice, and so, so do every one of us. To rejoice every day. To be of good cheer. Matthew chapter 9, listen now to verses 1 and 2. <clears throat> the word of God says in Matthew chapter 9, verse 1, the word of God says, And he entered, and that's Jesus, entered into a ship, and passed over, and came into his own city. And behold, they brought to him a man sick of the palsy. You know what palsy is? What was his problem when he was sick of the palsy? Okay, he couldn't walk. He couldn't get about. He was crippled. He was sick of the palsy. Lying on a bed. Could he get out of the bed? Did you know some people physically can't smile at all but they're still smiling on the inside they're rejoicing they're of good cheer it's all inside of them and if it's inside usually it's going to show on the outside there's some people you can read them like a book they don't try to cover up anything I think they ought to sometimes because they're sad and they want you to know they're sad and they're going around sad and they look sad and they ought not to be sad. I don't care what the problems are. If you've had a stroke, if you're, if you're not able to walk, if you're confined to a bed, be happy anyway. Are you happy anyway? Raise your hand if you're happy. Isn't that good? He's had a stroke. He can't move his right side. But what did he do? He raised his left hand. I'm happy anyway. This man was not able to walk in Matthew chapter 9. And they brought him to Jesus. He was sick of the palsy. He was lying on a bed. And Jesus, seeing their faith, said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, be of good cheer. Thy sins be forgiven thee. Now, he didn't say right here. He did not say, son, be of good cheer. You're healed. He said, son, be of good cheer. Thy sins be forgiven thee. Listen, brethren, that's a reason to be of good cheer. If Jesus had kept right on walking after he said, son, be of good cheer. If he had not lifted him up from the bed, he still had a reason to be of good cheer because his sins had been forgiven. I want you to understand this morning that you may not always be healed of whatever problems you have. All your troubles may not be corrected, but I want you to know that Jesus says to you and to me, be of good cheer anyway because your sins have been forgiven. Now that's a reason to be of good cheer. He didn't say be of good cheer, I'm going to heal you. He didn't say be of good cheer, you're healed. He said be of good cheer, your sins are forgiven. Have a good reason to be of good cheer? Absolutely. What if that's all you have? Well, be of good cheer. That's all you need to know is that your sins are forgiven. Now, I'm not going to go into the rest of the story. Somebody knows what happened after this anyway. But the main thing I want you to remember is Jesus told him to be of good cheer. 
and he was supposed to be of good cheer, and he was of good cheer before Jesus ever touched his body and healed his body. He might have been happier after he was healed, but he was happy before he was healed. He was of good cheer because his sins had been forgiven him. That's a reason for every one of us to be happy. Does Jesus always solve all your problems, or are there problems you have to live with in your life? We're going to have troubles and problems, but do you have to be sad because you've got troubles? What if I walked around all the time looking sad? I'll tell you, if I'm looking sad, when I'm looking sad, when I'm going around and I'm upset and I'm worried and I'm discouraged and I'm looking sad, it's because I am refusing to do what Jesus tells me to do. Jesus said, be of good cheer anyway. Anyway. Go with me to John chapter 16. So I just want to encourage everybody here. First of all, I want you to be of good cheer no matter what your physical problems are. No matter what your sicknesses might be. I may have cancer. I may have different kinds of problems. But whatever comes in my life, if I have a stroke, I hope you'll see me smile. At least half my face smile. It doesn't matter what else happens. I hope that I will be of good cheer anyway. I hope I will remember and I will say... This is the day the Lord hath made. We will. Not just I will. You need to tell other people. We will rejoice and be glad in it. We will rejoice and be glad. We will rejoice and be glad. Because our sins are forgiven. That's all you need to know. That's a, reason, that's a reason for you to be happy no matter what else is going on. You know, I've had to deal with, with uh, feeling bad sometimes in my life. And one of the reasons that we sometimes like to wallow in our sorrow is because we want attention. We like to wallow in our sorrow because... Other people might not know about our trouble. And we want the whole world to know about our troubles. I'll tell you what I want the whole world to know about is how wonderful Jesus is. I want the whole world to know. I love to see people that no matter how bad their troubles are, no matter what their problems are, they're happy anyway. I hate to make mention. Well, I do. I don't mind. My mama, <laughs> uh, Julie carried her to the doctor the last week she was alive and and we got, she, they got her to the doctor and, and she was sitting there and the doctor said, uh, tell me what all your problems are. And she said, I'm doing fine. <laughs> well, why are you here? <laughs> well, I don't know. I just, it's time to come to the doctor and I'm happy. Well, be happy. Be happy. Can you be happy? Do you realize it's wrong for you not? To rejoice in the Lord. Do you realize it's wrong for you not to rejoice and be glad? But you don't understand. I, I don't care what your problems are. You still have reasons to rejoice and be glad. John chapter 16. Now listen. Jesus again is telling the people of God to be of good cheer. In John chapter 16 verse 33. The word of God says. These things I have spoken unto you. That in me you might have peace. You know what? You know what you're going to have if you've got peace? You know, the Word of God couples it together often. It says, The kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but it's righteousness and what? Peace and joy. If you've got peace, you've got joy. If you don't have joy, you don't have peace. If you don't have peace, it's because you don't feel the presence of the Prince of Peace. And you need to trample Satan under your feet and say, Jesus is my friend. Jesus loves me. And I don't care what else Satan brings in my life. I still love the Lord and Jesus loves me. And so he says, I've spoken these things unto you that in me you might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation. I hear people say sometimes, well, it just ought not to be this hard. I ought not to have all these troubles. I, I just, well, Jesus says you're going to have tribulation. Don't think you're not going to have trouble. All this 
teaching and preaching today about, well, if you start following Jesus, your troubles are going to be gone. That's a lie from the devil. It's what people like to hear. It's just not true. When you start following Jesus, you're still going to have troubles. The difference is Jesus will be with you in your troubles. And so you can rejoice and you can be of good cheer. He says, in the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Is there a reason for us to be of good cheer? doesn't matter what the world does to us. Jesus says, in the world you will have tribulation. You're going to have troubles. So what are you supposed to do when you have troubles? When Kylie was a little bitty girl, one time I pretended I was crying. I said, you're leaving me. And you know what she started saying every time? She'd say, cry about that. Cry about that. And she'd do something and she'd say, cry about that. Cry about that. I'd forgotten that till just now. And, but you know, sometimes we like to cry about that, don't we? Cry about that. Cry about that. And we like to see people see us cry about that. Well, <laughs> be of good cheer. Jesus says, in the world you're going to have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. That's a reason to be of good cheer. Oh, the world can give you some tribulation. The world can persecute you. But it doesn't matter because Jesus says, I have overcome the world. They're under my feet. They're under my authority. Jesus is reigning right now. He's the King of kings and Lord of lords. And the world can't do anything to you. And the devil can't do anything to you unless God allows them to do it. And when God allows them to do it, you can do like the apostles did when they were being beaten. The Bible says they were of good cheer and they rejoiced. That they were counted worthy to suffer for his name. Brethren, it doesn't matter if your problems are sickness. Like that man that had the palsy. It doesn't matter if the world hates you and is persecuting you. It doesn't matter if you're having to stand alone. I pray that God will bless you to be of good cheer. Jesus says, I've written these things unto you so that you can be of good cheer. Because he says, I have overcome the world. So don't let the world bother you. So what's he saying in Matthew 9, 1 and 2? He's saying, don't let sickness bother you. Don't let it get you down. Be of good cheer if you got sickness. So then what's he saying about the world bringing tribulation to you? Well, be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. Turn to Matthew. Well, right here on the same page, look at Matthew chapter, I'm sorry, John. We're in John 16, 33. Look at John 17, verse 13. John 17, verse 13. I want you to remember now that in spite of your current conditions, you ought to be of good cheer anyway. In John 17, verse 13, the Word of God says, And now come I to Jesus is praying to the Father. You know what he's fixing to go to? You know what he's fixing to face? You know what's going to happen to, you know what all of his friends are fixing to do? All of his friends are fixing to what? What are they about to do? They're all about to forsake him and deny him and curse and deny him. They're going to betray him. That's what all, the Bible says they all forsook him and fled. And he knew it was coming. And he's praying to the Father and he says down in verse 13, And now come I to thee. Isn't that a wonderful thing? I'm going to my Father. I'm going. Jesus makes that statement over and over. He never says, I'm going to die. I'm going to die. He says, I'm going to my Father. He doesn't even say, I'm going to heaven. He never said, I'm going to heaven. He always said, I'm going to my Father. That's the reason heaven's wonderful is we're going to see our Father and our Savior I'm going to my Father. Isn't that good? To know you're going to the Father? Are you worried about dying? No, you're not worried. Why not? Where are you going? I'm going to see my Father. Did everybody hear her? She said, I'm going to see my Father. You have one of the prettiest smiles I've ever seen in my life. I wish y'all could stand up here and preach and watch her feed on the Word of God. She just, 
just feeding on the Word of God, just smiling. And she helps me preach because she's of good cheer. Does she have problems? Does she have troubles? She could give you a long list, probably, but she would have to think about it because she doesn't think about it. She thinks about her blessings. And you can do like Eve, who was in the Garden of Eden and had all those blessings and couldn't enjoy them because there was one thing she couldn't have. And that's the way a lot of children of God are today. Their lives are overflowing with blessings, but they can't be happy because there's something they want. There's something they don't have and their lives are concentrating on what they don't have and that's keeping them from being of good cheer. What do you don't have? What do you don't have? That doesn't sound right. What, what is it you do not have? What is it you do not have? Is there anything on your mind right now about something you want? Is there anything you want? Is there anything you want? Is that interfering with you being happy because you don't have it? A lot of people are just plain not happy today because there's something they want and they don't have it. And they're running after it and they're chasing it and they can't be happy because they can't be a good cheer because there's something they want. And you know when they get that, guess what? They're not going to be happy. That won't make them happy. And then there'll be something else the devil puts out there and they'll chase that and they'll get that or may not ever get it and so they'll be forever unhappy because they haven't learned to rejoice in the Lord. They haven't learned to be of good cheer. That's something you have to learn to do. The Apostle Paul said, I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. I can be happy. In whatever state I'm in. He put, they put him in prison. What did he do then? Did he cry? Did he moan? Did he complain in prison? No! He rejoiced. He had some new people to share the gospel with. He was in prison and was preaching the gospel of the kingdom of heaven in prison. He was happy. What was he talking to those prisoners about? Righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Was he happy? Yeah, put him in prison, kill him, do what you want to. Kill him, he says, well, I've got a desire to depart and be with Christ. That's far better. Go ahead and kill me. Now, he was of good cheer. Go with me to, uh, I didn't finish John 17, 13. And now come I to thee. Jesus is going to the Father. And these things I speak in the world that ye might have my joy fulfilled in themselves that you might have what my joy fulfilled you can have the joy of the Lord fulfilled he says I've written these things unto you so that you can have your joy fulfilled John the Apostle writes in uh, first John he says these things I have written unto you that your joy may be full Full of joy. Be of good cheer. This is the day the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Is the devil going to try to keep you from rejoicing and being glad? Yes, he is. But what can you say? By the grace of God, I will still rejoice and be glad. Go with me to Acts chapter 23. Now, in Acts 23... Uh, and this is what God does sometimes. Sometimes he says to people like... That man that had the pulse, he says, now, be of good cheer. Thy sins have been forgiven thee. So he gave him a reason to be of good cheer. Now, in uh, Acts 23, the apostle Paul was being told by Jesus to be of good cheer. There were people that were hating him. They were casting him out of cities. And here's Jesus speaking to him now in Acts chapter 23. Listen to verses 11 through 13. Acts 23 verse 11 he says, And the night following the Lord stood by him and said, Oh, by, remember, by the way, remember this. And the what? And the what's the next word? And the what? And the night. Was it a dark time in his life? I know it was literally dark. 
But it was a dark time in his life. And you go back and read this whole chapter. And the night following the Lord stood by him and said, Be of good cheer, Paul. Be of good cheer, Paul. For as thou hast testified of me in Jerusalem, so must thou bear witness also at Rome. Is that make him feel good? Yeah. Not fixing to die right now. You got something else to do before you die. Watch this now. And when it was day, well, now he's going to feel better because it's daytime. And when it was day, now what did he just tell him to do? Was he pre That night was Jesus preparing Paul for what was going to happen the next day. Something bad was going to happen the next day. So the night before it happened, Jesus said to him, be of good cheer. Watch. Verse 12, And when it was day, certain of the Jews banded together and bound themselves together under a curse, saying that they would neither eat nor drink till they had killed Paul. And they were more than 40 which had made this conspiracy. 40 Jews bound together said, We're not going to eat or drink until Paul is killed. Well, did Paul... Get some good news the night before. How would you feel if there were 40 people in the government said, we're going to kill this man. We're going to kill you. You're standing out too much. You're causing too much trouble as a Christian. We're going to put you to death. I hope the night before you've heard the Lord say, be of good cheer. I hope that even if the People band together against you that you can say, I'm still of good cheer. All through the scriptures, you know, <laughs> there's no end to this subject. I, I wish I had all day to just tell you about being of good cheer. And it doesn't matter. Gee, uh, Peter says this, he says, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to, it's, you're going to have fiery trials. But no matter what comes in your life, the Word of God says, Rejoice and be exceeding glad. Be of good cheer. This is the day which the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. The Bible's full of beautiful instances where God told the people, Be of good cheer. Rejoice. And God's telling you and me, Be of good cheer. May God help us. To be of good cheer every day is my prayer for Christ's sake.